Well, hey y'all, Donna here at Hazel Bell Farm. It is a nasty, cool, wet, rainy, windy day. So there's not much homestead stuff happening. I will do a garden walkthrough and I've got something fun to share with you, but now is not the time. So I have to probably wait one more day to get that up to you. Um, so I am going to make a nice hot meal of a baked spaghetti for dinner tonight. And I thought that I would share with you my French bread loaf. So I've got my recipe book here that I formulate recipes in the kitchen. And here is how I do French bread. All right, to start, you're gonna need flour. This is all I have left of my bread flour. All purpose flour is just fine. I find that bread flour just, it rises better. I get a, a better, fluffier bread out of it. So I'm gonna start with that and then I'll fill in um, with what I don't have. So you're gonna need about four and a half cups plus some for dusting at the end um, of flour. You are going to need a cup and a half of warm water a tablespoon of yeast, two tablespoons of salt, and about, um, let's see, about two to three teaspoons of sugar. I think this is two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Um, and then a little bit of olive oil at the end as well. If you'd like, you can choose to use an egg white at the end um, before you bake it to give it a crispier crust. My people don't care for that so much. They prefer a soft, fluffy crust. And so instead of doing that, I'm gonna bake it without the egg wash. And then when it comes out, I'm gonna brush melted butter all over it. And it's delicious. So come along. All right, so I'm gonna be using my mixer today and I'm going to be using the dough hook, but not yet. So I'm gonna add my water. and my two and a half teaspoons of sugar. Looks like I had a clump in there. And my one tablespoon of yeast. I keep my yeast in the freezer. This is the InstaFirm brand. And I'm just gonna give this a, a gentle stir. So I'm gonna let that sit for about five to 10 minutes or until it starts to get a little bit foamy. We always say when that yeast is happy, then it's ready to work with. So let that yeast get happy. Okay, so this is what I mean. This is nice and foamy, happy, ready to work with. So to start adding flour, I'm gonna start with one cup of flour and I've added my two teaspoons of salt to that and mixed it well. Salt and yeast, play off of each other very well, but they don't play together very well. So um, you want your yeast ready to go and active, and then in here I'm gonna mix that salt with the flour to get started. Now if you're using a KitchenAid with a dough hook, you might have to stop and scrape the sides down. Sometimes that happens. If you're using a better mixer like a Bosch, you probably won't have to do that. All right, now the rest of the flour gets added in half a cup at a time. Okay, so you can see there at the end how the flour or the dough ball was pulling away from the sides of the bowl. So this is still just, a, you wanna do this until, I say four and a half cups, it's roughly four and a half cups. It depends on the flour and how dry the wheat was when it was ground. Depends on all kinds of things like that. Depends on your atmosphere and the humidity. Um, so this is a good smooth dough. It's not particularly sticky, um, but it's, it's a good smooth. Now, that's not to say it won't stick to your fingers. You may have that problem still. Um, so this is mostly ready. I like to finish this by hand. So I'm gonna start with a floured surface. Pop 
my dough out here. It's, gonna, it's, a, it's a pretty heavy dough. And this is gonna make two loaves. You can save one in the freezer for later. Most people are gonna eat it up though. We are gonna use it to make garlic bread. All right. Make sure your hands are <laughs> well floured as well. All right, it's not terribly sticky. She says as it sticks to her hands. So kneading dough can be one of the most cathartic things I can think to do. So I'm gonna do this for about three to four minutes. Adding flour as needed. So in slow motion, I'm basically giving it a quarter turn, pulling this over and pressing it in with the heel of my hand. Quarter turn, same thing. Just keep going. So it really develops the gluten in the bread, stretches it along. As you do that, it stretches the gluten across the bottom, the outside here. And keep folding it, keep folding it, keep going. If it starts to become too firm to work with, you're getting close to over kneading and you don't want to do that either. All right, so I'm just going to round this nicely and pinch the bottoms, pinch the outside underneath. A couple of teaspoons of olive oil. So one for the bowl. Cover this dough with it. I'm gonna let this sit in here. My oven has a bread proof setting. It sets at 95 degrees. So I'm gonna let this sit in the oven for a few minutes. Now here's the thing. Um, you want that to rise to almost double um, which usually takes about 30 minutes. You can go an hour and that's okay. If you go any longer than that, it's probably gonna spill over and you're gonna have like an animal to deal with. <laughs> that's okay too, you just punch it down. If you come to 30 minutes and you're not ready uh, to you to bake that or to form that into loaves to bake, that's okay, just punch it down, let it rise again. The more it does that, um, the, the better your rise is going to be on your final loaf anyway. So that's okay to a certain point. You don't want to overdo that either. So I have about 20 minutes before I have to podcast with my friend Jenny for the American Farmstead Hers podcast. If you haven't checked that out, go do that. And, um, so I'm not going to be ready to do this in an hour. I'm going to check it before I start recording with her and then I'll probably punch it down and I'll let it sit until I'm done recording and then we'll form lives together. All right, it's been quite a while. Our podcast took longer than expected, but let's check this dough. I'm kind of afraid of what I'm gonna find. <laughs> I did punch it down once after the first 30 minutes and that was like two hours ago. So let's see what happens. Oh, I think it's gonna be perfect. I am gonna go ahead and set my oven to bread proof again. It's perfect. All right, here's our dough, nice and bubbly. So two tools that help me with bread are my rolling pin. This is a cheap $1 Dollar Tree before they were a dollar and a quarter rolling pin. I've had it for, I don't know, seven or eight years now, and it's my favorite rolling pin. I have an expensive rolling pin, but this is the one that I prefer. And um, this is also Dollar Tree, um, oddly enough. So this is just a scraper, and I like to use this for dividing dough and scraping dough up off of my nonstick mat. There's my dough, looks beautiful. And I'm gonna 
use a little bit of flour here. It's nice and poofy. So you want two equal pieces. We'll set one in that oiled bowl. You want to roll this flat into a rectangle the best you can. just like you would cinnamon rolls and then tuck these ends under tuck these ends under to about the middle now you could put this in a bread pan but you're not going to get that French bread texture. So it looks like this. I'm just gonna set it on the pan and do the other. All right, so we're gonna let these rise till they are double in size. It's gonna take about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I'm gonna put them in my oven on the 95 degree bread proof setting. If you don't have that, just find a warm-ish place. It could take up to an hour, but the idea is that you want it to double in size. Cover this up, put it in. Oh, all right, so these were too short, <laughs> but that's okay. I have a clean razor blade. We're gonna give it some cuts. We want this to bake at 375 for anywhere between 17 and 22 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna check it at about 17 minutes and see what it looks like. And um, basically you want the top to be golden brown. And then when it comes out, we'll put some melted butter on the top. It'll be so good. Melted butter. Make sure it gets down in all those little nooks and crannies. Well, I'm glad it turned out like this. It's not my most beautiful French bread, but you can see what can happen um, and that it is still going to be very good. So I'm gonna let this cool all the way. The thing about bread is it continues to cook even after you take it out of the oven. So if I tear it open right now, it may look a little unfinished in the middle. Um, I'm gonna let it cool. You should let it cool completely before trying to slice it. I don't think I'll wait that long. I've gotta try it. Um, and then when it does cool completely, I, I will slice it to make garlic bread or garlic toast, 
for dinner tonight to go with our spaghetti. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the recipe and let me know if you have any questions. Comment below if you have any ideas of what you like to do with French bread. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.